Okay, so Eddie Anderson, um, I kind of live and breathe project-wise. Uh, I've been doing that for many, many years, but I won't spend too much time on that. Um, you know, when we look at integrated projects and how to solve those problems, there's a lot of different users. Uh, there's owners, there's designers. Uh, you know, you've got the, you know, the field guys that are constructing the project and things like that. So there's a lot of different users. There's a lot of different data. And uh, more and more, TextDot is going to that data-centric instead of just a, a file, a plot. Um, so, you know, project-wise, it's, it's perfectly set up for that. That's what we've uh, done for years and years, and it's what we specialize in. So if you look at some of the challenges that uh, you have, which actually, uh, in our previous session, we, we did a pretty good job there at uh, talking about some of the challenges of working between district offices and things like that. Um, you know, we, we deal with companies all around the globe that uh, are using ProjectWise to be able to collaborate. And much like uh, how you would use it, even though your globe is a lot smaller than some of these global users, uh, you still have challenges because you're from different offices, uh, you, everybody's on different networks, uh, you know, different network lines and things like that. So you can't just share that T drive with everybody uh, in the company. So. Uh, we, we do a lot of uh, technology behind the scenes on making that happen, making it where everybody can work on one project, uh, where everything is seamless. So, um, you know, as far as uh, working across offices, we do have technology built in, uh, the caching server technology that we've mentioned, the Delta file transfer technology, uh, just, you know, the whole checkout process, and it's really all geared towards having a single source of truth. So if you kind of look at the reality, and this probably, you can probably pick up some of this is how you're currently working uh, with your projects. You've got a lot of different systems, a lot of different ways to communicate information. Um, you know, that may be FTP sites communicating with a construction firm. Uh, but, you know, regardless, in fact, I've, I've heard a lot of your pains today at having, you know, T drives everywhere. And you don't really know uh, are things up to date. So we've got uh, a lot of technologies that I'll talk about today that can help us out there. So we take project-wise and kind of break it down into three different segments. So the work sharing, that, that's, you know, the work in progress, that's us creating the designs and so forth, uh, but then the, the content reuse. All right, we want to be able to create it, we want to be able to reuse that information, and then we also want to get feedback on that information, sending that information out into the field, and that may just be for somebody viewing the documents, uh, or it may be somebody that's actually marking those up and getting that markup back into the system right next to the original file that was marked up. So we've got a lot of technology there. We're going to first start talking about work sharing. So work sharing is, is mainly what you're going to deal with, right? Uh, this is, you know, and, and that's what we've been talking about today. It's a lot of information. We're going to start sharing it. We're going to be able to, you know, use it from multiple offices, but that's all work sharing. And work sharing can mean between offices, and it can also mean between individuals within the same office. So a lot of technology there. We've got a lot of different views and in, in different ways that we can access the system, and I'll just, you know, talk about some of these. In fact, if we look at, like, the spatial view up here, and I'll, I'll kind of work my way around, um, but we, we spatially locate everything. So if you need to find a project and you don't know what the project name is, it doesn't really matter. You can actually locate that project based upon where it is in the world. If it's part of I-35, then we can just zoom in to where I-35 is and see all the projects uh, that are in a certain area. So you've got a, you know, a, a spatial visibility into your projects that you may not have had in the past. And that applies to every project throughout the state. Um, the web view. So we have, you know, multiple different types of interfaces uh, that we'll kind of talk about, but most certainly we have a browser capability in the project-wise. Uh, so I may not have uh, a project-wise client loaded on a machine. Uh, I may be, you know, somebody outside of TxDOT that needs access to a project and therefore we give them a login. Well, they may be logging in via a web browser. And when they do that and they log in, they may only see one folder with one file in the system. That may be the only thing that they actually have rights to. So there's a lot of different ways uh, that we can use uh, these different clients. Um, the permissions themselves, if you don't have access to a file, you don't know that it exists. You can't do a search on it. It just doesn't, you know, it's not there. 
Um, so it is a, a very secure system. Uh, it's being used at every level of the government, I can tell you that. Uh, and, um, you know, most certainly is a, a secure environment. Uh, document viewing, we have a lot of different technologies uh, for being able to view documents. Everything from mobile devices, um, you know, web browsers, uh, you know, installed clients and, and so forth. Navigator uh, is one of our products that we use as a desktop application that can view and consume information. And that's not just the lines on the drawing. That can be the, the business intelligence that we have about the files. So no longer are we just really dealing with a line as a line. A line may mean a whole lot more than uh, what that line is on the piece of paper. That's the business intelligence. And we're going to be able to start consuming that, especially once we start moving into the 3D world and, you know, basically uh, interrogate, you know, our, our designs, uh, being able to see that information, regardless of whether I've got Geopack or Open Roads or whatever product loaded. So a lot of advantages there. Uh, the, the dependency viewer there, it actually shows us, uh, well, if you can kind of see that, it's, it's kind of a, uh, you know, a pyramid there with the master file up at the top. And every file that it references, regardless of what type of file it is, it might be a raster reference, it, it could be um, you know, point cloud information, and whatever. It could be another design file. That all gets sh shown there. And if those files are referencing other files, that all gets shown. So you can actually interrogate. That's a, a, an interactive dialogue there where I can start picking and, and filtering information inside of there. Uh, so a lot of intelligence. And one thing about reference files, you're not going to lose reference files. Okay, I can actually take a file that may be referenced by 10 drawings, and by the way, I can actually tell that inside project-wise. I can say who's referencing this file right here, and I can see the 10 files that are referencing it. I can take that reference file and go stick it in another f project, another folder. I can do that 10 times a day. I can also change its name, and we'll never lose that reference from those 10 design files. So there's a lot of advantages there in having, you know, kind of a database behind the system. Uh, a lot of advantages on being able, you know, just manage your reference files. Uh, 3D viewing, just within the project-wise client, we now have a, a viewing tool. So you can actually view uh, 3D information uh, without having to have MicroStation loaded, without having to go to some other package. You simply just click on the, the viewing tab and, and select a file and it'll display it there. Uh, and then component viewing, I don't know how much, you know, we'll get into that, but uh, most certainly we can break down files into separate components. So we know what cells are in what file. If I need to find out where, you know, a, a, a cell is or how many cells are actually um, in a, a file, you know, of which cell and so forth, I've got all that information. So a lot of intelligence uh, behind the scenes there. So we've got a lot of different servers, uh, and most certainly throughout the, the text.pilot, pilot, only certain servers were actually deployed. So we do have a lot of additional technology. Uh, I'll talk about some today that uh, um, you know we'll, we may be using, some we may not be using in the very beginning, but maybe adding that on as we go along. The integration server, that is the main server. That is the brains of the operation. So that's going to basically control who has what rights, who's got what files checked out, security rights, uh, metadata, searches, all that is handled through that integration server. Caching servers actually can do file storage and they can cache files that are stored in other locations. Uh, so that's a, a big key for us. We've got uh, a web server, which is how you access it via a web browser. We also have another a uh, web server that we can tuck in there that would allow access from like an Android or, or an iPad or iPhone device. Uh, so a lot of capability there. We have a transmittal server. So if you have to send information to the outside world, one thing that you can do is create a transmittal. That sends a, an email to the recipient. They actually log in through a, a transmittal portal. Uh, they acknowledge that they received it, they can download, they can reply to information and so forth, and that's all tracked within ProjectWise. That's also one of the servers that you didn't use in the uh, pilot process. Uh, we also have point cloud services. Uh, so as, especially as you get into the 3D world and point clouds become more important, uh, we most certainly can handle those. So content reuse, being able to reuse that information, we've got a lot of different ways that we can reuse it. 
Uh, but you know, a couple of them that I'm, I'm showing here uh, represent some of the new things that we're doing with iModels. Uh, being able to open up iModel content uh, from Excel and interrogate it through Excel as opposed to MicroStation. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways that we can reuse this information. Uh, I models are going to become probably a little bit more important. Many people may not have even heard of what an I model is. Uh, but an I model really allows us to take all the business intelligence that we have about our files and the graphics. And, you know, this line is not just a line. It's, you know, it could be a, a, a sewer line or something like that. It doesn't matter. But that business intelligence can get packed into that I model, and then we can consume that I model from various devices. That can be mobile devices out in the field. It could be, um, you know, my iPad. It could be a web browser. Um, you've got a lot of capability there uh, to be able to consume that information. A couple of the uh, items that we, you know, take a look at when we're talking about content reuse. We have an interplot uh, server, which is a plotting server for us. Uh, we don't always use that just for printing paper. A lot of times we use that on the back end of uh, many of our servers to help us do processing. Uh, one example is the iModel composition server there. That is a server-side plotting capability. So if I want to uh, create a PDF that's, you know, it's a 100-page PDF, I can actually just uh, tell project, through ProjectWise, I can say I want to create a rendition of this file go off and, and create the PDF of it that's got 100 pages to it. And by the way, send me an email when you're done with it with a link to it. So then at that point, you go on about your business. You don't have to wait for the plotting process. That's all done on a server, and, and that is the iModel composition server. Um, WebView server, that's just kind of a read-only uh, type server for browser-based clients. Uh, so if you do have people that just need to grab information and not necessarily change or upload information, uh, that would be one of the servers that uh, we might look at doing. Dyma dynamic feedback. So taking all this information, being able to consume it, and then get uh, markups back, get feedback back from uh, the users that are out there. And we've got various systems that uh, can help us out there and a couple of different file formats. So most certainly PDF files are very popular. A lot of people use those to transfer information, transfer drawings. Uh, they're immutable. They're, you know, a uh, great file format. Well, we most certainly deal with those quite a bit with ProjectWise. Uh, the iModel Composition Server, that's one of its specialty is creating PDF files, so that's very important to us. Uh, iModels, if we want to take it to the next step and, and really, you know, uh, deal with the graphics, well, then we might transfer an iModel as opposed to a PDF file. Um, and, of course, PDF files can now do 3D, by the way. Uh, so we may be transferring 3D models uh, through a PDF format. So a lot of options that you've got there. Uh, we've got various tools to be able to consume that information. And like I say, whether it's a, a browser, it could be an iPad. Um, I, I traditionally do uh, part of my presentation when I'm doing mobile stuff on an iPhone. So there's a lot of, a lot of capabilities that we've got uh, within ProjectWise on, on getting that information out to the field uh, and in many cases, it's not, it's not necessarily the people out in the field. It may be you at lunch. Uh, it, it may be you in an office where you don't have access to your computer. It's on the other side of the building. So being able to make that information available no matter where you're at uh, with various devices. Now, another uh, technology that was not part of the pilot is uh, our dynamic plotting. So here's a technology that still uses paper but yet it turns that paper into electronic format. So with ProjectWise, if you do have the, the dynamic plotting, you could actually plot out a drawing. It becomes an electronic piece of paper. It has actually a, a fine gray background, which is a grid. You take an electronic pen, you mark that drawing up with the pen, and then you can throw away the piece of paper. You just take the pen back, you dock it into a USB cradle, and the markup file gets created back in the original folder where the drawing was located. So a lot of different technologies are out there. Um, you know, I can talk about many technologies that, uh, you know, as we were asking questions earlier, uh, might solve some of those issues, such as uh, our dynamic rights. Whenever we create a PDF file, we could actually uh, put dynamic rights on it and being able to send that file out to the wild. And even though it may get copied and emailed to 10 different people, at any time, if we revoke the rights on that PDF file, they'll never be able to open it again. 
Uh, and it may, if it's, uh, if there's a newer version, it'll actually give them a link to the newer version of the file. So a lot of technology out there uh, that we're using. Uh, when it comes to dynamic feedback, one of our main uh, software packages that we use is Navigator. So Navigator is a desktop application. It uh, allows you to open up and consume, you know, DGN type information, mark that information up. Uh, and being able to get that back into the system as a markup. And of course, it knows which file it's marking up, so it manages that entire process. If you've got 10 people marking up the same file, great. Within that navigator interface, I can say, show me everybody else that's actually marked up this file, and you'll be able to see all of their markups that they've done for that file. Um, navigator also has some additional capabilities, if you license it that way, to do clash detection and schedule simulation. So uh, Navigator, I think, is probably going to be something if you're not using right now, you probably will start using that in the future. All right, our uh, dynamic feedback server and services, uh, Navigator, which is a desktop uh, application. It's not necessarily a server, uh, but we do have our dynamic plotting uh, capability. Uh, Bluebeam Review, well, it's not our product, but it's another product out there that actually integrates with ProjectWise. And they do, you know, PDF markups. Um, and when, it, when we talk about point clouds, so point clouds, I don't know if, if you're using much uh, in, the, in the way of point clouds right now. Uh, if you're not, you probably will be in a few years. When I first started dealing with point clouds, a, a laser scanner was over $200,000. And the laser, you could actually watch it. It would you know, shine a, a, a red beam, and it would basically just go up and down. And eventually, if you watch it over time, it would just start you know, circling the room, and it's recording all that data. Laser you know, scanning devices uh, have come a long ways. Um, you know, if you've got uh, an Xbox One or your kids have an Xbox One, it's got that capability in it. It knows that if I'm you know, watching a video or I'm playing a game and I turn my head, well, it knows that and it pauses it, okay, because it's, it's reading everything. Um, so, you know, there's a, a, a lot of technology advances in the uh, laser scanning world, uh, being able to get these point clouds. Now, unfortunately, point clouds are enormous, and that may be one of the reasons why you haven't used them uh, too much, because they are enormous. Uh, they, they're uh, very clunky to, to get around. Typically, you're actually... Uh, loading up a, a USB drive and FedExing that between offices uh, because they are so large in size. In, in many cases, they're many gigs uh, in size. So with ProjectWise, we had to take a look at that and say, well, we've got to solve that problem. We've got users that are you know, all over the state, all over the world that need to be able to consume that information, uh, and we can't just push that around to every, every single office. So with ProjectWise, we actually do a streaming capability much like Google Earth. When you go to Google Earth and you zoom into an area, you're getting pretty fast updates on what that area looks like. We're doing the same thing with point clouds. So while you're in your microstation session, or Geopack, or Descartes, as you zoom into an area, you're just going to get the, the points that you need for where you're zoomed in at and the resolution that you're zoomed in at. Um, so it's very much like a Google Earth for point clouds. Now. We talk about point clouds, but it also does that for raster images. So if you've got raster content, you can actually uh, do the exact same thing. If you've got large aerials and so forth, well, you can have those inside of ProjectWise, and we're not having to transmit the entire you know, 500 meg worth of raster images. Uh, so we just transmit whatever you need. So it's a very good technology. It's very fast. It's very efficient. Uh, that uh, the, the point clouds will actually uh, store itself during your microstation session or, or navigator or Descartes session. Uh, and as soon as you get out of that session, then that information goes away. So we don't, you know, store point cloud information in a working directory or your caching server or anything like that. We do it per session. Um, so it's very, very fast, very efficient, and some fantastic technology. So, you know, a lot of different ways to, to use uh, point cloud information. Um, I don't know if Derek, you know, I, I know he's mentioned that in some of the other sessions that he's done, uh, but uh, most certainly that is kind of the wave of the future. Dealing with uh, real world situations, there's nothing better than point cloud data. It is exact. 
All right, iModel Composition Server. So iModel Composition Server, I've talked about it in that uh, it, it can get us PDFs uh, from a server-side standpoint, uh, which is most certainly some fantastic technology. Uh, we do have other things that we can do with uh, the, the iModel Composition Server. We can generate iModels, for one. Uh, so if we do have to automate the, the creation of iModels, we can do that. Same thing with PDFs. We may have jobs set up uh, so that every night at, you know, uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, go ahead and, and create new uh, iModels or PDFs for all these files that are in this, you know, folder here, uh, and maybe put those uh, PDFs over here in this, this other location. You can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, so batch jobs uh, are, are key there, uh, but most certainly iModels and, and PDFs, that's, that's a wave of the future. Uh, that keeps you from having to wait for a PDF to be generated. Uh, you kick it off and it processes. When it's done, the PDF shows up in project-wise. And like I say, you could say, send me an email. Let me know when this is done. And in that email will be a link back to the PDF file that was just generated. All right, and of course, uh, you know, standardize in, in, in publishing. So anything you would do now, uh, you can do with uh, uh, ICS, iModel Composition Server, so your CAD standards, uh, the fact that, you know, you've got a certain shape, you know, it's uh, uh, on level, you know, 22 on uh, a magenta color. Go plot a separate sheet from every one of those in the file. You know, most certainly all that type of technology is built into it. All right, and, you know, just looking at uh, kind of where it comes from, so a lot of different uh, devices or, or applications, uh, most certainly, you know, Bentley products, uh, but we also have connectors uh, for a lot of different systems, such as, you know, AutoCAD, Revit, things like that. We most certainly can uh, get uh, iModels out of that as well as PDF files. And then we can use that, consume that with uh, many of the different systems that are out there. At that point, it's just a, a PDF. If we want to put that through a, a markup review process, we most certainly can. So the iModel Composition Server, you can actually have one-to-one uh, -one, uh, on your caching servers or your storage areas, uh, or you can just have one. And I think the, the way we're initially going to be set up is that we will have one uh, iModel Composition Server back at the, uh, the location in the cloud. So cloud processing, uh, we can ramp that up with as many processors as we want, depending on the load. Uh, so it may be that it needs to ramp up to 30 processors to be able to handle the load. And that's one of the benefits of going to cloud technology is we've got unlimited you know, processing power at our fingertips. All right, Bentley Transmittal Services. That's a, a system that allows us to take project-wise information and send that to somebody that's not in our, our system. So that might be a, a, a design firm. It could be a construction firm. Uh, we can package up information, uh, key in you know, their user. It remembers the user. So if you have to reuse somebody from a, uh, an AECOM or something like that, most certainly that stays in the system and you can reuse their contact information. Uh, but it does allow us to take information from ProjectWise, package it up with a nice pretty co cover letter and send that email out to somebody. And you can, by default, it's got certain date ranges on it. Uh, so it may be that we want to get an acknowledgement within seven days. Maybe we need them to reply within 14 days. Uh, it'll send out the email, it'll send out reminder emails, it'll you know hunt them down until they acknowledge it uh, and respond if that's what we're needing. So it's a very good system to, to be able to manage that. Uh, by the time that we roll out, we will have the second rendition of that, which is the submittal portion. Now, some people may call them submittals uh, when they submit something to somebody else. We call that a transmittal. Uh, the other half of it is what we call a, a submittal, which is somebody from the outside sending information to you and your project-wise system. Uh, so we'll actually have the ability for somebody on the outside they package everything up through the web portal, and then they send it to you inside of ProjectWise, and it's all managed uh, through the interface. So you're going to be able to do dashboards, uh, for example. So uh, dashboards, and that's uh, another cloud technology that we have uh, that will be incorporated. 
those dashboards are going to be able to let you see visibility in your projects that you've never had before. Uh, it also includes transmittal information, so we can see who's the uh, the slowest person responding uh, on transmittals, who's the the busiest responder, who you know how many tr how many transmittals do I have hanging out there? Uh, it gives you all kinds of different feedbacks, and they're all nice little graphs and things like that. All right, and that is, uh, you know, there most certainly there's a, a firewall between there. So there's a uh, transmittal portal that, you know, kind of sits on the outside, and that's what they actually access. Uh, and then that allows us to communicate with, you know, all these third parties. So it's a separate, you know, it, it is a web server. Uh, so there's a, a portal web server uh, that's out there as well as, you know, what we call a, uh, the transmittal server kind of on the inside. Uh, so that uh, it, it most certainly is a, a robust system to handle the transmittal process. All right, uh, just you know, dealing with. Uh, in, in fact, I'm going to kind of talk about a couple of different technologies here. But uh, when we talk about transmittals, okay, that may be transmitting uh, electronically controlled PDF files. I mentioned before where we can you know, manage those PDF files even though we've just sent them out into the wild. Uh, so most certainly that's uh, a common use is to be able to lock those things down uh, before they go out into the wild and, and being able to manage those as they go out there. Um, other technologies that we've got, uh, and, and this is another one that's uh, coming out here very shortly, is the ability to use QR codes. So everybody's seen the little square, you know, QR codes at restaurants and things like that where you scan it and it shows you their website and things like that. Uh, we have that ability within uh, our system, our cloud-based system, to be able to put a, a QR code on like a PDF, send that out into the, the wild, and, and if somebody wants to verify whether this piece of paper that they've plotted out is up to date, they can pull out their smartphone, scan that QR code, and that basically goes back to the, the cloud system project-wise, and it tells them whether that file is up to date or not. So even though you know, it's a, an older piece of paper, well, is it up to date? I don't know. Let's find out. Just scan it. Yep, it's up to date, or nope, it's not. And by the way, here's a link to the, the updated file. So we've got a lot of technology that you know, is uh, out there that we're going to be able to start taking advantage of uh, that you, you know, you probably never could even imagine, you know, a couple of years ago. So, uh, really excited about that. And a lot, of, a lot of that capability is the fact that um, we are dealing with, you know, cloud technology, uh, because it, it is an access point that's uh, we, we can give access to anybody that we want to, uh, and all they need is internet access. All right, dealing with uh, project-wise out in the field or our information out in the field. We've got the ability to uh, chain up our, our project-wise data with various apps. So we've got a lot of apps. I, I think Bentley has a total of about eight apps. Um, I, I'm, uh, we're trying to keep them as few as possible. We don't want an app uh, every day to just solve one problem. So we want to make sure our apps uh, are robust. Uh, for example, the field supervisor up there, that is kind of our, if you will, that's our project-wise client. That's how you're going to access project-wise information. We also have that thing tied up to various systems, other systems that Bentley creates, uh, SharePoint. Uh, so we've got a lot of technology there uh, that we can you know, access through that field supervisor app. But we kind of break it down into the four general areas. Uh, document access, you know, that's most certainly very important. But what do you do with it after you've accessed it? Uh, whether it's you know, having to mark it up, uh, view it, consume it, take a measurement, whatever. Uh, we want to have that capability through our mobile devices. Uh, field inspection, we've got Inspect Tech. And there's a lot of technology that uh, uh, behind the scenes that, you know, now we're doing uh, forms building so you can actually build a form that, you know, um, we may have a, a certain, you know, text dot related type form that we want to build into an iPad. So they can go out in the field and an iPad fill it all in and that comes back to the system. Uh, map mobiles for uh, consuming all of our you know, geospatial information. Uh, and, and as it you know, kind of suggests, that's through a, a map type interface. Uh, model review, the Navigator Mobile is uh, our lead product there. It has an enormous capability uh, and it can view massive, massive models. 
So there's been situations, in fact, you know, we, we talk about the, the new version of MicroStation coming out a lot, um, you know, and 64-bit and things like that. Uh, the, the iModel format that we use for the iPad is actually very efficient, uh, and it reads a design file a completely different way than MicroStation reads a file. So it's actually able to view a massive amount of data uh, very quickly. You can fly around it like it's a video game. So, and that's where we're, we're kind of getting with our, our desktop applications as well. We've learned a lot uh, from video games and our mobile technology. All right, so field supervisor, I just wanted to highlight one of our apps. And you know, like I say, we've got several. In fact, we've got a new uh, on-demand training app. So uh, if you wanted to take training on a particular Bentley subject, you could actually pull that up on our iPad and you know watch the training video on it while you're maybe working on your desktop. But nevertheless, field supervisor, this is, like I say, our, our interface into our data. So this is the interface that we would use to be able to consume information out of project-wise to be able to open up files, uh, open up PDF files, open up iModels, things like that. You would do it all through here. You can also uh, post files back. So if I had to mark up a, a, a PDF file or something like that, I could save that back into ProjectWise uh, through this interface as well. So why is ProjectWise different? Well, most certainly the interoperability. Uh, so we've got a lot of different formats that we support, uh, a lot of different systems that we've tied into and so forth. Uh, but mo most importantly is the multi-vendor support or multi-application support. So we've got a lot of different uh, vendors and applications that we deal with, whether that's uh, Microsoft Office, whether it's Geopack, you know, you name it. Uh, uh, we've got a lot of integrations on some of the others. We have to, you know, kind of take a look at that and see what the best way to integrate with that is. Uh, and, you know, a key is single source of truth. So if you're using ProjectWise correctly, you have a single source of truth. Doesn't matter what office you're in, where you're located, who needs to work on it, uh, and most certainly that single source of truth allows you to have job security. I know that's you know, kind of unusual to say, but if you look at some of the other uh, users out there that have used ProjectWise, one of the offshoots of ProjectWise over the years has been job security. They no longer are ramping up certain offices because we have big projects out of that office, and when those projects are done, ramping down. They get to maintain a steady level and use resources wherever they happen to be. And, you know, I don't know the particular instance earlier why we were actually using the Childress, you know, district, I have no clue. But there was probably a need, you know, and instead of hiring somebody, we were able to use project-wise and use resources that we already had within TxDOT. So, you know, single source of truth is most certainly key there. Project-wise is available for an on-site deployment as well as an online or a cloud-based deployment. Um, so in, in the TechStock case, you started out with an on-site one. Uh, what we're rolling out is cloud-based. So, and it's, it's the same software, right? It's the same project-wise install that we do regardless of uh, which uh, style we're going in. If we look at uh, who's using it and the saturation there, if we just read the ENR global top design firms, 24 out of the tw top 25 use project-wise. That should tell you something. If we slide down, 82 of the top 100 ENR design firms are using ProjectWise. Uh, and then if we skip all the way down to the bottom, in fact, that's outdated because now we have more than 50% of the DOTs are using ProjectWise. So ProjectWise is being used out there in the industry. You're not bleeding edge on anything. Uh, and here's some of our users. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll remove that from my next presentation. <laughs> Let's just say we've already put Band-Aids on it. You've already bled. Um, so anyway, uh, we do have a lot of different firms, you know, using ProjectWise and, and many that uh, uh, you probably work with. So here's one project uh, that AECOM did. Now, AECOM is uh, kind of a a very similar type of situation. They've used both a project-wise uh, deployed in-house as well as a hosted project-wise system. Uh, so, the, and they continue uh, to use both to this day. Uh, they worked on a, a project uh, out of Dallas, uh, SH-161. 
So after that project was uh, completed on their design side, they recognized an $850,000 return on investment that ProjectWise was able to give them. That's a lot of coin off of one project. So they looked at a lot of different things, travel, paper, printing, a lot of different areas uh, that they were able to, to recognize a, a fantastic return on investment just on that one project. So, and most certainly AECOM has a lot of projects globally. So they're, they're in the process uh, much like you are. They're expanding their use of project-wise. Uh, they are all the way around the globe, so we've got many data centers uh, working for AECOM. Uh, and and uh, they too have, you know, gone through the pains, but they've, they've you know, fought through it, and now we're, we're very successful with AECOM. All right, so to wrap it all up, you know, work sharing, uh, content reuse, and most certainly dynamic feedback, they're all things that, you know, you may not have thought about today in how you do your job, but most certainly it's important, you know, for the future to look at how do you get this information out to the field? How do you, you know, communicate with different users? How do you share information? And this can most certainly help you out on doing all those tasks. So uh, project-wise, you know, I do believe that uh, in the future you're going to be able to look back and say, good move. <laughs>